This is a CS Plus production brought to you by Baldwin Wallace University. In this tech camp, we're going to use Scratch, which allows us to build uh, games, animations, a lot of different things fairly easily using a block based programming language. Uh, Scratch is available online for free. You don't actually have to download or install anything. Um, you technically don't have to uh, create an account either. You could just go right to Scratch and then start building. So I'm going to open up a new tab just so you can kind of see how to get there. If you go to a browser and just type in scratch.mit.edu and hit enter, you can uh, create an account if you want or you could just click on the create button right up here. And then once you click on the create button, uh, an environment will load up like this and you may see a tutorial window down here that you can click and, and close. So the first thing that we want to do is uh, we're going to be building a game today where we're going to have some things that are coming in from the side. And so uh, what we want to do is we want to be able to have our character jump over uh, those things. So we're going to actually change the default character here. And so I'm actually going to get rid of this sprite. All the characters that we use in this are called sprites. So I'm going to go ahead and delete that. And we could draw our own, but uh, I'm going to pick one uh, that's available. So I'm going to go to choose a sprite button on the bottom right and then click on that. And then I'm going to find uh, what's going to be my main character. Now, um, we probably want it to have uh, in a way kind of facing us, but you can really pick whatever you want. Um, I'm more of a dog person, so I'm going to type in dog. And then kind of like this dog here, it even moves. I guess that dog looks like it's flying. I could do that. It's more of a space dog. I guess I could do that. I'm going to go ahead and do the space dog. And there's our space dog here. It's called Dot. So I'm going to take Dot and I'm going to bring Dot about just right here to the bottom left corner. The first thing I want to do is just to kind of get dot to move, just to kind of get a feel of the controls. So the way that Scratch works is you have these uh, blocks of code over here um, that you can kind of snap together and, and they'll do different things. So the first thing that we need to do is if we take a look, I just want to kind of click down here. You'll notice that these are categorized into motion, look, sound, events, and so on. Um, I'm going to do this uh, event block here. I'm actually going to zoom in my browser so it makes it a little bit easier to see in the video. And so I'm going to say, okay, well, when this green flag button is clicked, meaning when I start this um, scratch game or, or animation, uh, what do I want to happen? You'll notice it has like that little notch there on the bottom. Well, then I could plug something in there. So let, let's just get our, uh, to just get acclimated with this, I'm going to take a motion block and then just say move 10 steps and drag it over here. And then so if I go over here on this green flag on the right and I just click that, my sprite moves 10 steps. And if I wanted to have it move to the left, well, I can just throw a negative value in there. And then you'll notice the dog or dot walks backwards. Now we could do a, a smoother animation. I'm going to grab this block and, and kind of put it over here. And if it's here by itself, and as long as there's no action connected to it, um, it, it won't have any effect. I'm going to have a, a glide here. And for my glide, you'll notice that it has these X and Y values and you'll see those X and Y values over here. Um, I'm going to have a glide to uh, a, a positive value for this X. So if I take dot and I kind of drag dot over here, you'll notice over there it's 127. I'm going to have dot go from negative 168 to, or negative 157 now to uh, just a positive value. So I'm going to do 127. And if I click that green flag, you see dot kind of have like a, a smoother transition over there. So in our game, what we're going to do is we're going to have some things coming in from off the screen that we have to jump over and avoid touching. Uh, 
So in order to do that, we're going to do a jump. Now to do a jump, we're going to use the same kind of glide mechanism here, um, but we need to keep track of, of, of where we're at. So what I want to do is, if you notice over here on the bottom uh, left, we have our X position and our Y position. I'm just going to take those in and bring those over here because we're going to use that. And if I click on this operators category, you notice I have up here this plus. And you'll notice too, as we work with these blocks, some blocks fit into others. So, you know, these snap together, you see that notch there. And then these are an oval, so they will fit in here. And so if I want to do a jump, I might want to glide up a positive Y and then back down. So to do that, I want to take my Y position, my current Y position, that, that block holds my character, my sprite's current Y position. And I don't know, I'm going to add maybe 50 to it. I'm going to put that there. And then I'm going to duplic uh, duplicate this block. So I right click on that and did duplicate. And then I'm going to subtract a value from here. So in order for me to come back down, I need to decrease my Y. So I'm going to take my Y and then subtract 50. And then so now if I click on that green flag, we do a jump. Now that may have looked odd because it glided all the way from over here. Well, it's because our X value over here um, is, is going all the way over to this 127. So we're going to take that X position here. And then I'm going to right click and duplicate that and then put it here. And so you'll notice we kind of have this jump. Now it doesn't look too bad, but let me decrease the glide. I'm going to do maybe like a 0 0.5, so a half a second. And maybe I'll increase how high I can jump to 75. Now I'm going to make those values equal because if I go up 75, I need to come back down 75. And then so I'm going to click that green flag here. And that works pretty good. It's a little bit of a faster jump, but if you kind of notice, it almost looks like dot is hitting uh, its head on something. And so it's not like, really like a smooth jump. If you think about maybe throwing a ball up in the air, um, it accelerates fairly quickly and then gravity starts to tug at it and then pull it back down. So as it reaches kind of the top, um, it slows down and then it speeds back up as it uh, comes back into your hand. So we can do something similar um, to that effect. So if we want to make a, a smoother jump, there's, there's several different ways that we could do it. Uh, one of the ways is we could use uh, a sine wave to kind of help us with this. So if we think about a, a sine wave, and, and if, if you don't uh, understand it, uh, this completely, this, that's okay, um, but we're going to use it to our advantage. We're going to use essentially the this, this second value here. So. Um, we're going to start off with a fast acceleration. Think of this as a, a 90 degree angle here. We can see 90 here. And we're going to go from 90 degrees to 180. So this would be the top of uh, our jump where we're no longer increasing. And then we slowly uh, uh, decrease back down to our starting position. That'd be negative one. So if you imagine if we were to jump a height of one, we go from that 90 degrees to 180 where we reach the top of our jump and then we come back down to negative one. And so we're gonna use this unit circle to, to help us out here. So to do that, the, the first thing I wanna do is I wanna set uh, a couple variables. And I also want to set this up so that when we jump, we have a key, key that we can press to do that. So under my events, I'm going to click on that and I'm going to drag over this when space key is pressed. 
Okay, now I'm actually gonna get rid of this because we're not gonna do that jump anymore. We want it to have a, a smoother um, animation. All right, so when our space key is pressed, what I wanna do is I wanna be able to store some values, um, some variables that we're gonna use in this program. So over here on the left-hand side, if I go to variables, I'm gonna make two variables here. I clicked on that make, make a variable, and I'm gonna make jump angle. I'm gonna do for this sprite only. I'm going to make another variable called jump height for the sprite only. And when I press that spacebar key, I'm going to be doing my jump. And so I'm going to set my jump angle, meaning if we looked at the unit circle where we're starting again, and I'm going to set that equal to 90. And for my jump height, this is how, how high uh, the dog can jump. I'm gonna set it equal to 10. And so I'm just clicking in there and typing in those values. Now, the idea is that I want to move that dog up and then back down to, to make it look like it's jumping. And to do that, I need to repeatedly move it up and then back down. So to, to do that, I'm going to go to control here and I'm going to grab this repeat loop. And so inside of here will be code that I can repeat under a certain condition. And that condition, if I go to my operators here, is going to be while my jump angle is going to be greater than 270. I'm sorry, repeat until um, that jump angle is greater than 270. So we're going to repeat this loop until that jump angle is greater than 270. So I'm going to go back to my variables here and then grab that jump angle. And so once we get past 270, that's our negative one value. Okay, and we're gonna start off at 90. So if we remember that unit circle, we're gonna go from 90 down to 180 and then to 270. Then for our motion, we're gonna grab that and uh, grab our change Y. And our change Y, we're gonna to go to operators and you notice that there's some built-in functions here. Well, luckily for us, there's a built-in sign function. So I'm going to do sign. And then I'm going to put in there jump angle. So I'm going to go back to my variables here and then put that ju jump angle. So I'm going to get the sign value of that jump angle. So that's that 90 degree and then again 180 and then 270. And then pretty much what I'm going to do is I'm going to change my height using this multiplied by the jump height. And so for the jump height, I'm going to get this multiply block here, that asterisk there. I'm going to take that sign of jump angle there, and I'm going to grab the other variable, which would be my jump height. Now, when we're running this loop, the angle is going to be stuck at 90. So if I were to actually hit the spacebar key, there goes dot. If we ever, if, if dot or our dog ever gets stuck, we can um, bring him down and he'll just float back up almost like a balloon that we lost. Or we can hit that stop button. Okay, and then that will stop the animation. So if you ever get in a point where you're stuck and, and things just aren't looking right, hit that stop button and, and that will do it. So again, if I hit the spacebar, dot goes up, but dot must come down. So the problem is, is that we're not increasing our jump angle here. So what we need to do is we need to change our jump angle by a number. Now, if we go by one, it will take forever, or, or I want to say forever, but it will take a long time for dot to come back down. So I'm going to do it by five. Let's see how that works. I'm going to hit the space bar. 
And that looks like a better jump. So as Dot, he's, the, the dog springs up and it goes up very quickly at the beginning and then gravity starts to take hold and it slowly comes down then picks up and then uh, lands on the ground there. And so at this point, we have a jump working. All right, so now that we have our, our jumping working, the next thing that we wanna do is we wanna be able to move uh, Dot uh, to the left and to the right. So just like how we have uh, an event block here, when we press the spacebar key, uh, we, can, we can do that jump. We could do the same kind of block over here. So over here, we can drag over that, that same type of block and then we can select one of the arrow keys and we can really do any keys here too. So if you ever wanted to do maybe like a hidden key in your game that, that might do something special um, or maybe if you wanted to allow the, uh, the, the character to be able to use an item they may have, you can, you can plug in one of those keys there. Uh, but I'm just going to do uh, the right arrow key here. And to do our movement, we're just going to go to motion. And then here we have our, our move block. And so I'm, I'm just going to drag this over just to test this out. And I'm going to hit the right arrow key. And you'll notice too, whenever we uh, do an event, the, the uh, code, these blocks here will highlight to kind of indicate that. So even let's do the jump so we can see that. Notice how this is still highlighted until it finishes. And then the same thing here for a right arrow. So I'm going to tap that right arrow and you'll notice that dot will move 10 steps. Now this does move our character, but it's not really smooth. Uh, there's a couple different ways we could do this. I'm actually going to take this away because that's not really what I want. We could do this glide here. And we've seen this before. And I can change the, the X value to be uh, a lesser negative value. So um, I'm going to go maybe negative 90 here. And if I hit the right arrow key, you'll see that, well, dot does glide to the right. Now, the only problem with, with going this route is that if we wanted to use this, but if I want to hold down the right arrow key, uh, dot would have this glide, stop, glide, stop, glide, stop motion. And I, and I really don't want that. So I'm going to take that away and, and move that out of here. Now, that's the, the, the one case that we need to consider is, well, what if they do hold down that right key? So the way that we could do this is we could plug in a loop. So I'm going to go to Control, and I got this forever loop here. We use kind of a, a loop similar here for a jump where we do this repeat until. I'm going to plug in that forever. And this is going to get called whenever the user presses that right arrow key. So while I'm in this forever loop, I want to check if that right arrow key is still pressed, we'll then keep moving. So if they tap it once, we'll get into this code and then we would move once. But once they tap that right arrow key, I want to keep checking. Do they still have it held down? Do they still have it held down? Do they still have it held down? And if they do, we want to keep moving them right. So to do that, I'm going to go to my sensing here. And you'll see this key block. So I'm going to bring that over and say, well, if the key right arrow is pressed, then this is the code that I want to do. I want to change my X by 10. So let me go back up here to motion. I could do that move 10 steps, but I also want to make sure that I move to the right. And so I'm going to do that change X by 10 here. And move 10 steps does move us to the right, but we're actually going to do something else with this later. So if I hold down that right arrow key, you'll notice that dot moves. But you'll also notice this is still highlighted. I haven't done anything. Um, now we could leave this as is, but even this forever and this constant checking of this if, um, is taking up a uh, uh, CPU cycle. So the, the CPU that runs uh, our program, uh, it's gonna keep checking if this key was, or if the key, uh, right arrow key was pressed. And so we don't wanna do that. So we wanna go in this forever loop and say, well, look, if, if they still press that right arrow key, when they keep moving, 
by x, change x by um, this value. Otherwise, we want to stop checking this. So I'm going to do stop up here, and that will stop this from uh, evaluating. And I'm going to pull out that if. So I said in here, well, if that key right arrow is pressed, I want to change x by 10. Otherwise, I want to stop checking this. So over here in our control, I can do an if and then an else. So I'm saying, well, look, if that right arrow key is pressed, I'm still going to change that x by 10. Otherwise, I want to stop executing this. And the way that we could do this is you'll see this stop over here. We don't want to do stop all because that's going to stop all of our sprites and all of our animations. So I'm just going to do stop this script. And that means this script right here that I'm running. And so I'm going to move dot back. And then if I now move dot to the right and I let go, you'll notice this is no longer highlighted. So we can move dot to the right that way. Now, if we want to move left, it's, it's actually really easy. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to take this entire block here, the set of blocks, I'm going to duplicate it. And we can organize these to however we want. I'm going to maybe try to line our left and, and right right next to each other. And to do a left move, really all that we need to do, I, in fact, I forgot which one was the original, but it really doesn't matter. All I want to do is just change that right arrow to left arrow. And instead of changing x by 10, we could just change x by negative 10. Okay. So then if I do a left, a right, that moves left and right. Now this, this may be okay with you, but I would like dot to face the other way if they're moving left. So think of maybe some popular side-scroller games you may have played like a Mario or, or something like that. Um, you want the character to, to face the direction that they're, that they're moving. So to be able to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to go uh, back to our motion. And you'll see over here we'll have this point in direction. And so we can say, well, if we're moving to the right, we might want to point in the direction 90 degrees. And then if we move to the left, we could just take the negative of that value. You'll notice over here you have this dial that you can use. So I'm going to have a point to negative 90. And then let's test it out. So I'm going to move to the right and move to the left. Well, it's facing left, but uh, we have a bug. Uh, I don't think that we want dot to be on its head. Now, it has a space suit on, but uh, we're not making our game, at least right now, I'm not going to make my game, uh, to where it's in space. So what we need to do is we need to set, well, when they rotate, when, they, when dot moves uh, left or right, and we change that point and direction, what should the style be of it? So there's a couple ways we could do this. I'm going to go to events and I'm going to say when the space, when the uh, green flag is clicked, I want to set that rotation style to be left, right. So I'm going to do it in this one spot. So when they want to play the game and they hit that green flag, if I go right, and then left, you'll notice that dot faces in the right in the right direction. So in the first part of the game, uh, what we want to do is we want to build a level where we have things coming at us and we have to be able to jump over them. Now, right now, our, our character is probably a little bit too big for the screen. If you're to think about, again, a, a game that you play and, and uh, if the character took this much of the TV, well, that'd be a, a pretty big character. In fact, right now might be a good time to look at these extra buttons over here. Um, you'll see these buttons in the top right. One allows you to see more area of your code. So if I click on that, you'll see this game screen gets really small. But then I get to see more area of my code. I can also uh, zoom out and then zoom in over here on my code as well. And then this is the default view that we had before. And then if I want to make my game very big, uh, even if somebody's playing it, you'll see this screen, uh, this like stretch icon here. 
I can click on that and, and there we see dot and, and dot's really big. The other thing too, you may not want to have these variables being shown in the game. Uh, so let's go ahead and fix that. I'm going to go to my variables block over here and you'll see this checkbox here. Um, all that does is allow it to be shown over here on the right. So if I were to check those, you, you'll see those over there on the right and I can move those around. Um, but I'm just going to leave that off right there. But if I want to make that smaller though, I'm going to click on dot, make sure it's selected. And you'll see over here to size, I'm going to decrease that maybe to 75 right now. And then we can always work with that later. And if I make that uh, much bigger, you'll see that, well, maybe we can go a little bit smaller, but I want to still be able to see uh, dot while we're working on this code. And I could change this over here too. All right, so for the first part here, we want to be able to have multiple levels in our game. Um, so I'm going to do a stage where I have this initial backdrop. And so I'm going to uh, click on uh, backdrop over here. And then I'm going to choose a backdrop. So if I go back, you'll see all these different options. I'm just clicking on this button here. You can always draw your own if you, if you like. If you have an artistic side to you and you like to draw your own uh, backdrop, you can do that. But I'm just going to choose one by default. And I'm going to try to find maybe something like in the forest or the woods. Um, maybe I'll do this forest one here. So there's our forest. And there I have dot. And then I'm going to add another sprite. So I'm going to click on choose sprite down here. And I like this bear. I think I'm going to pick that bear or maybe the bear walking. I don't know if I would necessarily want the bear standing yet. So I'm going to click on that bear walking. And I'm going to take that bear. I'm going to move it over here. And I want it to also change its direction so it's pointing towards me. Because I'm going to have this bear coming at me. And I just need to be able to jump over it. And so I'm going to take that direction. I'm going to have it point this way. Now you notice the bear has the same effect um, that we had before. I'm going to click on that left right button and that will fix that for us. And then we really shouldn't have to do it again. Now if I test my jump, that's not really high enough for that bear. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the size of the bear. Maybe go down to 50. That might be more of a cub, but that's okay. And I think that jump might be able to do it now. I guess we'll find out later uh, when we try to test this out. So what I want to do is I want to have this bear move from the right to the left. So I'm going to go back over here. And you'll notice that I have this uh, when flag getting clicked, things that I would do for this sprite. So you'll notice if I click over here, I have different code blocks for each sprite. So um, I can change uh, the behavior or the actions for each sprite individually. So over here for my bear, I also want to do something when I click on that green flag. So I'm going to go to my events over here and drag over that when green flag clicked. What I want is I want to keep having that bear move from to the right to the left. And so I'm going to go to the, uh, my repeat blocks here because I want to keep having that bear walk until some sort of condition happens. Now, one of the things that we could do is I can have that bear walk until it hits the edge. And so let's try that out first. I'm going to go to my sensing over here. And you'll see I got this touching sense. So you can detect when another sprite touches some other object. I'm going to put edge here. And then I'm going to go under my motion and then do move 10 steps. And then so if I click on that green flag, you'll notice a couple of things. One is the bear just kind of does like a, a glide across the screen. And then once it touches that edge, it stops. But I kind of want to have the bear go off the screen. And I don't know, I kind of want to have the bear uh, be able to walk. And so if we actually take a look at the bear here, 
and click on this costumes tab, you'll notice that it has all these different costumes it can wear. And this is kind of a way for us to uh, have our sprite animate in a way so it looks like it's alive. So if I think about this, and if I go through this quickly, you can kind of see like a walking motion. What I could do is I can have my bear, every time it walks a little bit, go to the next costume. So I'm going to go to my code here, and under looks, I'm going to drag onto their next costume. And so if we try that now, we click that green flag. It looks like the bear's moving now. Now, we can't have that sprite go off the screen entirely, but we can get it to go fairly close off the screen. But notice that when I have that bear going, it stops right now at that edge. And I want it to go a little bit further. So if I were to just grab it and kind of move it close to the edge here, you'll notice I got like an X value of maybe like negative 278. And I'm not really too concerned about the Y value now because the X value tells me how uh, where it's at horizontally across the screen. So instead of doing this repeat until touching edge, I'm going to go down here to my operators. And I'm going to grab this lesson comparison. So I want to keep going while, and I'm going to go under motion, my X position is less than, I'm going to do negative 280. So I'm going to repeat this code until um, my X position is less than negative 280. I'm sorry, I'm not, I'm not going to repeat this code while this is the case. I'm going to repeat it until that's the case. So I want to keep going until that X value uh, of the bear is less than negative 280. So I'm going to run that. And now we see our bear going off the screen. Somewhat. Keep coming back. There's a couple ways we could do this. Um, one is we can create a copy of this bear, and then maybe we'll do that later. But right now, what I want to do is I just want to work with the bear that we have right now. So what I'm going to do is once we get to this edge, I want to hide the bear just for a moment. And so I'm going to go under the looks, and I'm going to select this hide. And let's just try that out. A good way of doing programming is to test things out as you go. And there it is. It looks like it went off the screen. Now the problem though is our bear is gone. We can't find it. Now I can grab this show block here and I can always double click on it just to show it. And so if you ever want to just run one block, you just kind of double click to show it. But the important thing here is I want that bear to show up again in the starting spot. So what I can do is if I move that bear just kind of like where it's nose a little bit off the screen i can see that that x value um, we have this uh, negative 139 here i'm, I'm going to try that out but what we want to do is after that bear goes off the screen we then want to show it back on the other side and then have it go again so let's do that so what i want to do is i need to uh, have that bear go to a different x value so I'm going to hide it, and then we're going to move it so the user doesn't see. And so I like that 281. I'm going to keep that. But what I want to do is I want to make sure that that bear stays on the same Y position. So I'm going to take my Y position over here and then drag it here. And then I'm going to show it. And then so if we click on that green flag, here comes our bear. It's off the screen, and it starts back up again. Now, how could we get this going to where it runs over and over and over again? Well, if we think back over to our control over here, we have these loops. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this forever loop, bring it over here. And this is the code that I really want to go over and over again. And so I'm going to drag this right into here and then bring this over here. 
And then now if I click on that green flag to start playing our game, here comes the bear, here comes the bear. And I can even practice. We don't have anything detecting yet if the bear gets us. Um, but I can test to see how that jump works. In fact, if I want to make my uh, dog maybe about like the same uh, level uh, where the bear is as far as the Y goes, um, I could do that here. And then now I can test it out. And I can make that bear smaller too. But I think that's a pretty good size to start off with. We can always change it later. I'm going to go ahead and hit the stop button here. So in the next tech camp, what we're going to take a look at is how we can figure out, well, what happens if that bear touches down? Um, how do we detect if, if the person then lost the game? Um, how do we keep track of points? And how do we add some variation? Uh, maybe we go to a next stage where we have a different backdrop. Maybe we then have a different character. Uh, maybe they move at different speeds. Maybe we could do power-ups and things like that. So stay tuned. That's what we'll be looking at in our next tech camp.